Hello everyone. Uh, today we're gonna review the new Orc Codex. I just got back from driving to the hobby store crazy taxi style. Uh, I hope everyone's okay. I'm sorry if you were involved. On my way back from the hobby store, I uh, drove by the novelty eyewear store and was able to pick these up. My vision has decreased to 2400 due to years of highlighting uh, boy eyes within an inch of my face uh, for long periods of time without uh, as so much as seeing the sun for weeks on end. The reason why only one of these glows is because I only own three AAA batteries at the uh, time of recording this video. But uh, I'm really excited to look at this book. Uh, I was able to locate it in the store thanks to uh, having a big green orc on the cover. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, take a look starting The first step is to find the space brains your friend Mike Ludwig gave you after he stopped playing Warhammer in the freshman year of high school uh, and moved on with his life while, uh, while you're still here in your late 20s combing for storm shields and trying really hard not to sneeze. <coughs> Once you're done uh, with your dehydration sneezing fit, you can go back to wishing you and more lightning claws. Oh wait, that's right, it's the future. We can just print whatever we want. These MK1 Terminator models are by our station user Matt Holmes. Uh, they rule. I wish they would carry me in their arms forever. So this video may or may not have uh, supposed to been a clickbait video for Dark Angels when they first came out. Uh, I was gonna do a Deathwing speed painting tutorial, and that didn't happen because I laid in bed for a month being sad and playing Hearthstone instead. And I went back to just trying to make a normie Deathwing army with less and less enthusiasm by the day. Uh, I mean, there's a reason I don't really play Space Marines. In any game where there's a monster character and there's a human character, why would you ever be the human? Like most good things in life, my uh, change in direction started with a box of skulls. I like this librarian, I think he's very cute, but the two original rules I set for myself were making this army were no human faces and no primaris. Um, we stuck to one of those. After getting absolutely trashed by these fucking guys, because I thought uh, taking a list comprised only of melee terminators would be a cool and fun idea, I realized the 5 inch movement is pretty easy to kite and impulse by uh, these chonkers. I don't know if they'll end up in my list yet, but the uh, Pandora's box has been open and is full of large men. Dude, I hate green stuff so much. I keep going back to it thinking it'll be fun and I'll learn something, and I just, it's just a hot mess every time. God invented digital sculpting for a reason. I was eventually able to finagle my way into some sort of cloak. I made a bunch of robes for the Terminators too, and one thing that helped a lot is uh, using cooking oil instead of water to lubricate your tools and hands. I'll probably keep working on getting better of green stuff. It'd be a fun flex to have, but I don't know, it's just, it's just so annoying. You're sculpting of a chemical made for filling holes in toilets. Most of the sculpting efforts were put into the 3D printed squad of Terminators. There's a bunch of uh, space marine bits added too from the plastic kit. I think the most frustrating thing about green stuff is just how how long it takes to try. I eventually developed the patience to just learn to work in layers and uh, fold stuff slowly, but boy, boy, it's a grind. The next step is to start making an elaborate 40 millimeter base and then uh, <laughs> remember that you're using this as a count as Ezekiel and he's on a 32. If you're wondering what my voice jump cut there, it's uh, yeah, I forgot how to pronounce Ezekiel. I have like 40 minutes of footage of me just trying to push the skull back into position over and over again. Getting bored with the concept of your army is not a common problem in Warhammer. It's probably the reason most armies go unpainted. Building these guys was a good exercise in learning to pivot and uh, trying to make something that uh, had lost its initial stride and purpose fun again. Because if it's not fun, then, you know, What's the point of doing it? Uh, if you get tired of your old color scheme, I think it's fine if you switch it halfway through. And it's for sure a better solution than just starting like a completely new thing. This 3D printed Talon Masters when I started to get really into uh, and excited about the idea of what the army could be. Yeah, you know, everyone calls it blind jitsu, but I mean, there's tons of artists who do things in this style that are super cool. This is a drawing um, by Dave Gallagher from Warhammer Fantasy. There's so much awesome empire art from this era. It's like some of my favorite Warhammer art ever. This is an illustration by Carl Kopinski. And I 
I mean, just look at this fucking thing. It's so sick, man. Fantasy's awesome. Low key kind of want a tattoo of this bear. So, anyways, I get in there with my box of skulls and I start blasting. I got this space brain blast from Fantasy Flight Games when I worked there as a sculptor like six years ago. Seven years ago. I just checked my emails. Holy shit, where does this time go? I actually really like how that head on this model looks, but uh, a trip to the skull store still improves everything. This is me going through the process of being like, okay, we're gonna get a little weird with this model, but yeah, we're still probably making a Deathwing speed painting tutorial at the end of the day, right? Okay, Tyler, you had some gold chains. It's getting a little weird, but don't go crazy. You have a lot of stuff to do. You're ignoring a lot of other things in your life to do, or hammer. This is me realizing I probably could have done an entire video on this model alone. Look at this guy. What is he? What is he doing here? And now somehow there's a grot involved? Sure, why not? Let's go up some 3D printed candles. It's not like the video is a week overdue or anything. But like 12 hours later, we ended up here. Also, I dropped my lazy Susan at some point and now it wobbles. Spent about 10 minutes looking for a tip of this assault cannon before they were realizing they just straight up look like this. Isn't that insane? That's just, that's what they look like. Some product designer at GW was just like, yeah, it's, I've seen guns before. That's what they look like. That's a gun. So I drilled out all the gun barrels very slowly this time. It's not, we're not doing death kill a shotgun part two. Yeah, I'm personally very happy with how weird this turned out though. Like if I didn't go for a hard planchets who turn, I probably would have played this army like once and then literally just like never touched it again. Watchers in the dark are by far my favorite part about Dark Angels. I like little creatures. I just like them. Talon Master really set a bar for weirdness for the rest of the army though. Um, I like Admechs. I'm trying to incorporate a bunch of Admech bits. Uh, I thought a coffin sidecar would be fun, so now there's that. The main point of this video is that I had a bunch of space brains that I wasn't doing anything with already and that would be super cheap and easy to make. And instead I bought a Triumph of St. Catherine and two Panadin engines exclusively for the bits because, you know, it just it happens somehow. This is Dr. Candlehead, licensed MD. He's a great guy with a cool aura that was never FAQ. Never mind, I just checked, it was. So the next big hurdles are going back to the rest of the army and trying to make them match this level of spookiness. Uh, this Terminator I'm really happy with, and I would make all the other ones look like him if I had time, but I'm trying to get this done for a tournament on May, so I don't think that's gonna happen. The tournament is on May 15th, uh, and one way or the other they're gonna have to be painted, so I don't know if I'm gonna... I might, like, just speed paint them for the sake of playing and then do a video about it after. I might just do a bunch of, like, speed painting videos along the way if I have time. Time. Uh, we'll see. But either way, yeah, there will be Deathwing painting videos. I'll have a link in the video description to all the 3D printed bits I used in the video. And uh, if you support me on Patreon, then uh, I will post anything I sculpted for this and for future videos uh, there as well. Also, a big thank you to everyone who already supports me on Patreon. Um, yeah, it helps out the channel a lot and it's a big source of motivation for me. Uh, here's all your names. I love you all.